So as you know, uh, Liberty Iowa hosts Liberty on the Rocks uh, everywhere. Uh, here we have hosts of Cedar Rapids, Council Bluffs, Sioux City, all over. Um, and we're happy to have another one here in Council Bluffs. Um, and during this primary season, a lot of our candidates are coming out wanting to talk to you, talk to the Liberty Movement about what's important to you. And it's always, you know, Tea Parties, Tea Partiers, Evangelicals, Liberty Movement, all coming together to kind of find out, well, what, what candidates should we have? Who should we actually stand for? So it's great to be able to hear from candidates when they're coming out to these Liberty on the Rocks and, you know, spend some time researching the candidates. You know, I know that uh, our, the, our movement's kind of considered to be very tech savvy, you know, with the Facebook posts and the forums and whenever we like somebody, we broadcast it right away. Um, if you hear something you like, you know, let everyone know. If you have a question, let the candidates know. Uh, so we're happy to be able to give you that opportunity right here. So, uh, see we have a lot of cameras here today. Um, I just asked that during the question and answer session, I let them know that they cannot have any cameras on just because we are here as a social gathering so that you guys can ask the questions you want to ask. Um, and not feel like your face, Kelsey's face, or you know Jordan's face is going to go up on Facebook when it comes soon. Uh, so uh, I just ask that everyone honor that. But uh, without further ado, I wanted to introduce Secretary of State, uh, former Secretary of State Matt Schultz. Uh, Matt's been, uh, Matt's, oh he's still, sorry. Well, maybe eventually Congressman. But, uh, you know, he did take the pleasure of being able to come out to talk with us here. Um, Matt's been able to champion many issues, including voter ID, uh, which he's been, uh, you probably see the bumper stickers around. But uh, I don't need to give any more of an introduction, but Matt. Great, thank ahead. you. Well, uh, thank you all for being here. Um, you know, apparently I'm scaring Nancy Pelosi and Stacey Apple because they've got a camera here wanting to know what I'm going to say. So it makes me feel good. Things are moving in the right direction that they care enough to come to Council Bluffs. So hopefully they spend some money here too, help our economy in Council Bluffs. Um, I, you know, I love Council Bluffs. I love the state of Iowa. I love this district. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure most of you know that I served here for five years as a city councilman and uh, just was honored to be able to have the people of Council Bluffs give me that opportunity to serve here. Uh, and then the people of Iowa give me the opportunity to serve as Secretary of State. And it's just, it's been a wonderful experience. But when Tom Latham announced that he was going to retire, it, uh, it hit me pretty hard. I'm sure many of you know I'm married and I have five children. And, uh, you know, when I look at my kids, each one of them were born with more than $50,000 in national debt. All of our kids were and are. And, uh, you know, I really feel like what's going on right now, that we are robbing the future of our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren because we can't get our spending under control. We're in a situation where the government just keeps spending and spending and spending money that we don't have and keep kicking the can down the road. And, you know, the government has shown they don't really want to, to make tough decisions. And that's why I'm standing up and trying to fight for a balanced budget amendment. I really believe in it. I think we need a mechanism that forces the Congress and the President to make tough decisions. And I'm a supporter of the penny plan. If we want to balance the budget, I think we should adopt the penny plan. The penny plan cuts a, do a penny from every dollar spent by the federal government. And it caps spending at 18% GDP. And if we did that, we could balance the budget in less than five years. Some experts say in three years. And that's why I'm a proponent. Cut one penny for every dollar. Sounds pretty reasonable. And cap spending at 18% GDP. That, that would, would balance our budget. So I really, I really believe in a balanced budget amendment. And I'm a huge supporter of the penny plan. Because if we, if we want a future for our children and our grandchildren, if we want them to be able to have the American dream, then we have to have a strong economy. And a strong economy is only as healthy as our debt. And we, we cannot keep operating with trillions and trillions of dollars of debt. Which brings, brings me to my second point. If we're gonna balance the budget, we have to repeal Obamacare and replace it with free market solutions. Obamacare is two trillion dollars, almost two trillion dollars of extra spending. Money that we don't have. 
So, you know, you're going to hear every Republican talk about allowing people to purchase insurance across state lines, allowing small businesses to group together. We need to do more than that. We need transparency in order to have a real free market system. It's, if you think about how we have insurance and how we deliver health care in this country, it's a lot like each one of us going to the grocery store and picking up a can of chicken noodle soup. And each one of us would pay something different for that can of chicken noodle soup. Because if Wellmark is your insurance company, they've negotiated one rate for it. If Medicare or Medicaid is, is helping you with your, your health care, then they've got different reimbursement rates. If Coventry is your health insurance company, they have a different rate. Everybody has different things they've negotiated for when it comes to what they're going to cover for health care. And consumers need to know. We need to know. We need to know what the hospital is charging us for our health care. You know, when, when's the last time you got a full itemized bill? You knew exactly how much it cost for everything they're charging you. You know, if they give you a toothbrush, it's not free. They're charging something for that toothbrush if you have to spend the night. They're charging something for your Tylenol, for the medicines they're giving you. But usually, you know, you pay your co-pays, you pay your premiums, you pay, pay your deductibles, and that's it. If we want to have a free market system, then we need to have transparency. And consumers need to know what they're getting. We also need tort reform. We want to really get the costs down in healthcare. We need tort reform. So doctors aren't practicing defensive medicine. You know, I mean, they're, they're worried about lawyers suing them. So they practice defensive medicine and drive the costs up. We can't have that. If we want to get costs under control, we need tort reform. And we need to talk about wellness. Talk about health. It's health care, right? We need to talk about health. Because, you know, our, it's really a supply and demand issue. You know, a lot of people are needing more health care. But, but supply is not going to keep up with it. So we need to start talking about wellness. How do we, how do we get our population healthier? How, how do we incentivize wellness? You know, we've, we've done it at the state. I can tell you, I've, I've enrolled in the wellness program. And when I did that, I found out my, I had to, you know, do some tests, some blood work. My cholesterol was a little high. They showed me the charts. If I didn't start eating better and exercising, you know, what that could mean in 10 years or more. Really got me thinking about my health. And how do I, how do I think about my health? And what do I put in my body? And how do I take care of my body? Now, some, you know, genetics, the people are just you know, going to have problems and we want to help people, right? But we also need to be thinking about our, ourselves and how do, we, how do we take care of our bodies? And so, you know, I think when we're talking about how do we repeal and replace Obamacare, we need to replace it with those principles, with free market solutions, and focusing on transparency and tort reform and wellness. That's how we get the cost down. That's how we get the cost down. And, and, and that's what I want to do when I go to Congress. Balance the budget. Get a balanced budget amendment. Replace and repeal Obamacare with free market solutions. And quite frankly, what I think we really need if we want to fix Washington is term limits. And I don't think it's a Republican issue. You ask any Democrat when George W. Bush was president if they were grateful for term limits, they'd all say yes. And you ask any Republican if they're grateful for term limits right now, they'd all, on the president, they'd all say yes. How do we send people to Congress when Congress has less than 10% approval rating but we keep sending the same people back. More than 90% get reelected. We want to change this country. We want to get people talking about ideas and how to move this country forward. We need term limits. Because for every great legislator I can think of, every great congressman or congresswoman or senator, I can think of Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> I can think of Chuck Schumer, Dick Durbin, Patrick Leahy. Harry Reid. Harry Reid. Uh, yeah. We could all probably sit here and start naming people all night <coughs> who are working for themselves instead of the people. And we need, we need term limits to make sure that when we send people to Washington, they work for the people instead of for Washington. That's what I'm, that's what I'm running on. It's common sense. And we want, we want you know, I, 
I want to have the American dream for all our kids, for our families. And I believe in America. And I think we can get America back on track. And, and that's why I'm running. I wouldn't do it otherwise. I love being Secretary of State. We get to talk about business and elections and voter ID. And I've been working hard as Secretary of State. You know, you've seen what I've done and how I've been fighting for integrity in elections. And every time the Democrats attack me and the liberals in the media, but I don't back down. I don't back down in the things I believe. And I won't if you send me to Congress. I'm asking for your support. I'm asking for your vote. We've got a primary on June 3rd. If you haven't voted already, if you haven't voted early, I'd ask for you to, to support me. Help us put yard signs out. Talk to your friends and neighbors. Because it's really a group effort. It takes everybody. And I know. Because I defeated a Democrat incumbent in 2010. Almost never happens. Governor Branson and I were the only ones. But I didn't do it by myself. It's because of great people helping. And I want your help. And so I, I, I'm asking for you to support the campaign. Get involved. Our website is votematchschultz.com. Um, there's a place where you can sign up to volunteer and be a part of the effort. And we've got other literature and things that you can pick up and take. Uh, and I think we may even have some yard signs. Yes, we have yard signs and we have bigger signs too. Perfect. And, and Naomi Lenin is working our, our, we actually have an office of Council Bluffs. I don't think any other uh, candidates do. I don't even think Stacey Apple has an office of Council Bluffs. So, uh, you know, please stop by the office. Naomi's doing a great job here. Uh, and uh, with that, that's, that's uh, <clears throat> the end of my remarks. So thank you for all being here tonight. Appreciate it.